All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist, and I do these videos on YouTube. They're tutorials and tips and tricks and shortcuts and whatnot. And I recorded this entire image for YouTube with the intention of putting it on here for you to watch for your enjoyment and to learn something. And the video crashed, the recording crashed. And I was able to salvage only the end, and I'm really upset about that. But I can't help it. There's nothing I can do about it at this point. So I wanted to kind of walk you guys through a couple of things that I did talk about while I was recording it. And uh, so it's not a total loss today, hopefully. So let me hide some of this stuff here. So uh, this is the original image. And when you're planning a, a cover or a pinup like this, uh, even in a, in a cover there are, um, or a pinup, there's still things you want to kind of have flow. And there's things that you want to draw attention to and things should recede. And, and there, there's some things that um, you want to make sure that it, that it reads properly, that, that things... Uh, there's enough separation, you're getting depth, because in this case especially, there's no background. Um, so the depth is all on the colorist, basically. So I'll tell you kind of what what I thought about. And uh, and the first thing I did, uh, I separated all the characters out into just their own um, separation. So, so that if I did want to go in and make a big change to just a character or to to, without having to go re-render anything, I can just grab that character very quickly. Uh, I got my flats here um, from actually, let's see, it looked like, looked like this when I got them. So a little psychedelic, right? Um, and yes, step three, color the comic. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, let me get all these things turned on here. So, so with this image, the goal for me was Let's get Psylocke here in the front, front and center, and make her a little darker than everyone else. Uh, her whole character is shaded a little bit darker, and what that does kind of brings her to the forefront. And we're going to use something called atmospheric perspective to generate some depth here. So you can see she's the darkest thing on the page. This is actually easier to see in black and white. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to put a black layer on top and set the mode to color. And I use this all the time to check my values. You may have seen me talk about that in another video. But so you can see that she is really the darkest thing on the page here. All right. And then we've got Wolverine kind of a close second. And then Archangel. And then lighter still, we've got Jubilee and Storm back here. And then, uh, and then uh, Rogue, and and actually Storm is probably the lightest thing on the page with her white hair and white costume and his wings. But it really kind of frames everything pretty well, I thought. So, uh, so the other thing I did, other than just make things lighter going back, is I also did color holds. I changed the color of the lines for everybody behind Archangel. So. These characters here, I went in and selected all those lines and lightened those lines just a little bit. Not very much because the lines are pretty thin to begin with. You couldn't darken them or you couldn't lighten them very much. But it did create a little bit more depth. Uh, and then Rogue, I went in. Hers are lighter still even than Rogue and, and Jubilee here. So I wanted to make this image as 90s as possible. So I found a uh, uh, kind of a starburst effect. Uh, texture on a, on a free site and I guess while I'm here we'll go ahead and talk about this since there's not much else <laughs> to show you in this video so how did I do that and let me just grab let me grab a texture here and I'll show you how I did this again from the start so I'm not going to actually use this texture but you'll get the idea all right, so I just dumped a texture, first texture I found on Google. And let's make it fit the page here. So now in the case of these uh, speed lines here, I, I also, you know, grabbed this box and did some stretching. You can hold down the corners and hold down control, and you can sort of warp these things around into perspective and, and do all sorts of, of neat tricks. And I'm just holding... Uh, control to do this. So, um, so I set my, I stretched out my texture the way I wanted. 
and let me get this under the line so we can see. And then I went and got the flats layer and selected the background. And I don't know if you guys can barely see that, but just the background is selected. And then I went to my texture layer and clicked the little mask button. This mask is a little square button or a rectangle with a uh, circle in the middle of it. And boom, there's my texture filled in all the spaces automatically. The next thing I did is set the mode to overlay. And you can kind of play with the uh, opacity of that to see how strong of an effect you want on that. It actually looks pretty cool. But, um, but yeah, you can play with the opacity to get the effect you want. And that's how I drop that texture in there. So, so anyway, I'm sorry I can't have this full video for you guys. I was really hoping to uh, be able to show you that. But this is the best we can do. Um, if you enjoyed this video, um, like it, uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I try to do these as often as I can. And if you want to see more, I also have a coloring course. There's a should be a link in the bottom of the description. It's 10 hours and 50 lessons and gets in all the detail that I sort of uh, skimmed over today. So if there was something here you missed, it was probably there. Um, please feel free to leave questions in the comments. Um, that's fine. I, I love answering those and try to get some good discussions going there. So, so thanks to everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next video.